Hello everyone, and today uh, we have some good news uh, in terms of uh, Rome Remastered news. So today, Creative Assembly and Feral Interactive, they released a new beta patch, 2.0.2, and uh, you can uh, get the beta right now by uh, going to your Steam uh, Properties window, selecting the Betas tab, and selecting patch 2.0.2 .2 from the list, as it says here in the page. I will have a link to this uh, page from TotalWar.com about the patch uh, in the description below. And uh, the most important thing about this latest patch for Rome Remastered is that it adds a lot of the modding functionality and tools that uh, people have been waiting for. So, you know, uh, some mods have been in limbo, or a lot of modders have been waiting for these uh, tools and uh, limit increases uh, to be implemented uh, before they start their mods. So uh, this is super important for the mod scene for Rome Remastered. So in terms of modding, uh, one of the biggest features here that has been included is the fact that the unique game features from Barbarian Invasion and Alexander have been moved to the main game, to the uh, regular Rome Total War. So this is a huge thing because, you know, in mods for the original Rome Total War, uh, a, lot of, a lot of the time modders had to choose which um, EXE they wanted to develop their mod for, right? And they had to pick and choose the particular features they wanted. So if they wanted, let's say, the immortality feature from Alexander, uh, they would have to develop their mod for the Alexander engine. But then when you did that, you lost the some of the features from Barbarian Invasion, including Shield Wall and Swimming, for example, um, which are things that, you know, are super important in hoarding. Uh, as well. So there are so many, there are so many features. Oh, and custom unit cards and models for named characters, again, from Alexander. So there are so many uh, things that have been simplified here because now you can activate all those, all these features in your mod for uh, the regular Rome Total War uh, campaign. So you no longer have to like pick and choose. Do I want to develop my, I don't know, Lord of the Rings mod for Alexander, but then I lose the shield wall ability, right? Because uh, you want to have, I don't know, maybe some immortal characters in in uh, in your Lord of the Rings mod, let's say, just as an example. But then you also want swimming in shield wall and Shiltrum, right? So I think this is an excellent change. This is something that has been bothering uh, modders of the original Rome Total War for uh, 15 years plus. Right, the fact that they they had to pick and choose which EXE they wanted to develop their mod for. Uh, so this is an excellent change. I'm very happy about that. Additionally, what some what a lot of people might be more excited for are the increased limits. So um, the biggest one here for me. So units, the unit limit has been increased. So the previous max was 500, and now it's. Uh, the theoretical maximum is 4,294,967, or sorry, 4 billion, 294,967,296 entries. Now, I highly doubt any mod will be able to uh, add that many, but it's good. And then map regions. This is the one I'm the happiest for. Map regions have been increased, again, to essentially unlimited. So this is incredible. You can make a huge map, a huge in scale. I don't know, like the Medieval 2 Big Map mod that was huge in scale. And, um, you know, really push the number of provinces. And this is really great because a lot of the time modders wanted to make, you know, extremely detailed maps, historical maps. But then they were really limited by the province limit. And this... Um, lifting of the map regions limit, I think, is huge for a lot of mods because it can re really, really put these Rome Total War mods on another level from the original Rome Total War. Uh, because the original Rome Total War's limit was, of course, 199, with the last region being technically the C. So this is actually a typo here, this 500. Um, so this is a major improvement. And also resources have been increased. So that's incredible. 
Um, you know, uh, there are so many hidden resources that mods add that allow for different units, unique units, uh, things like that. So, and buildings as well, and scripts affect them and things like that, or, and they affect scripts. So I think uh, this is a major as well. Again, it's probably something a lot of people, a lot of players don't think about when playing Rome Total War, but this is a very good thing, this uh, increase in the resources limit. So uh, the faction limit has not been increased in this patch. Uh, however, um, they are. it is going to be increased from 21 to 31, uh, which is the um, maximum for this uh, engine, this Rome 1 Medieval 2 engine to be increased to. So 31 was the faction limit in Medieval 2. And uh, they are going to bump up Rome's faction limit from 21 to 31 in the next patch. So uh, we'll have to wait for that. Uh, so, additionally, there was something I wanted to show here. Perhaps it's somewhere else on this page. Um, so, uh, regarding scripts, this is a huge thing. So, uh, in scripts for Medieval 2, for example, like Europa Barbarorum 2's mod, right? Uh, you don't have to do anything to activate the script. Whereas in Europa Barbarorum 1 for Rome Total War, you always had to click on the city and then click on the advisor and the show me how button and all that. And, you know, sometimes you could forget, and then if you forgot, then your game session could be ruined, or you could feel bad about it. But in any case, now they have added the ability for mods to activate the background script without any user intervention. I think that's huge, uh, because that was one of the things about Rome mods that really bothered me when compared to uh, Medieval 2 mods, where they could just activate it automatically. Um... Additionally, there have been tons of abilities added to scripting. Uh, there are tons of things uh, that modders can do now with scripts. I think this is going to be huge for some of the more um, total overhaul type mods, right? That have heavy scripts like, I don't know, Invasio Barbarorum type mods, Europa Barbarorum type mods. Um, yeah, tons of mods use scripts and this is going to be really big for them. So you, you have to, uh, what are scripts used for a lot of the time? So um, I, I would say the most uh, famous utilization of a script is the way Europa Barbarorum handles uh, faction buildings and uh, reforms, right? So that's all handled by scripts. So in any case, this is big. So the other thing is logging. Now this is not important for players so much, but logging is really important for modders. So it makes it easier to develop mods because it provides more a detailed log. So they can actually uh, debug their mods more effectively uh, with the improved logging in Rome Remastered. There are also a ton of new tools. Uh, so these tools are, these tools will allow it to um, will allow modders uh, to edit the aspects of Rome Remastered that were a little bit hard to uh, get into before or impossible to do so. So you could uh, take models and unit models and things from the original Rome and port them to Rome Remastered, but you couldn't really edit the Rome Remastered models uh, themselves. As far as I'm aware, I'm you know I I've never edited units before, even when I modded Civ Four. I always you know, asked permission and took other um, modders units because I was, I'm was i just not a talented 2D guy. I, you, you can tell from my thumbnails, I can't make thumbnails. But anyway, um, uh, another important aspect of these tools is, oh, oh, beside the audio extraction, which is major, um, and the skeleton update script, uh, all, uh, the uh, IWTE third-party tool, has been updated to support Rome Remastered modding and the Campaign Map tool, which allows the creation of new maps more easily for Remastered, uh, is in this patch, so that's incredible. Uh, you know, the Mundus Magnus map was created, I believe, using a version of this tool. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, yeah, so right now we have the Mundus Magnus unique map for Rome Remastered, and uh, we're going to be seeing a lot more now that this Campaign Map tool is out and this really you know this is what puts rome and medieval 2 map modding head and shoulders above uh rome 2 um 
I was going to say Shogun 2, but you can edit the map in Shogun 2. Uh, Empire, Napoleon. Uh, you can create unique maps in Roman Medieval 2 more easily than in um, the other games. And in other games, of course, it's impossible. Right, so this is an incredible thing. This is going to really help improve the mod scene, allow for a lot more fantasy mods, regional campaigns, and things like that. So this, the mod tools included in this patch are a very, it's very nice to see them. Additionally, everyone knows there were, there were problems with the Rome Remastered Mod Manager, and they were extremely annoying for both modders and players, because players who subscribe to a lot of different mods in Rome Remastered from the Steam Workshop would have to, um, you know, they would encounter this error where the mod manager would be stuck loading endlessly, right? So you would try to refresh and then it wouldn't work, it wouldn't load your mods. So the fix for that was unsubscribing from a bunch of mods. But that is, you know, that's untenable because then you unsubscribe from a mod that you wanted to try out, but then you forget its name, you forget what it was, you lose track of it, and you have to unsubscribe, and, you know, it, it stinks. So now that bug has been fixed, so you can subscribe to as many mods as you want, and there won't be any mod manager lo uh, endless loading errors. Additionally, the uh, this patch seems to have fixed the issues where modders would upload a new version of their mod, and then their mod page on the Steam Workshop would get deleted. So this happened several times with Total Conquest, which uh, right now is one of the biggest mods for Rome Remastered. And I believe it happened with Imperium Serectum as well, where they uploaded a um, new version of the mod, a refreshed version, and then it Steam just deleted. They got an error code and Steam just deleted their... Um, mod page so they had to create a whole new page they lost all the steam workshop followers and it was extremely um annoying for a lot of modders and that's why even some mods uh, have not been uploading their mods to the steam workshop lately because they didn't want to deal with this issue so now that has been uh, fixed as far as i can tell um additionally there are a lot of miscellaneous fixes here there are a lot of user interface tweaks and fixes. So th there's a lot of functionality that has been added. So they added the functionality to rename settlements by double-clicking the settlement name. Uh, that's a big thing. Added the functionality to change tax rates within the settlements list and settlement overview panel. So then you can change it with just one click rather than two or opening just one menu rather than two. So that's a good thing. Uh, it improves switching between lists. It uh, fixes a display issue relating to faction icons on settlement tags. So there were issues with um, many mods where they would add a new faction, but then it, uh, on the faction symbol of this new faction that uh, shows up next to the city names of said faction, uh, it would show the original unmodded um, faction. So let's say you replaced the Brutii faction with uh, Epirus. Uh, the, all of the cities under Epirus's control would have that Brutii faction symbol, and there was a bug where you could not change that. So it, this was a major problem, you know, just for aesthetics. It was very strange, but that has been fixed, as far as I can tell. Uh, additionally, there, there are a ton of fixes and changes here uh, to the UI. So this is uh, the campaign UI. Uh, fixes list. So uh, I don't want to go through all of these. Uh, you can probably download the beta and check these fixes yourself. Like I said, um, it's good to see a lot of these UI fixes. Um, there, there were some issues with the UI as well, a lack of responsiveness and things like that. So uh, I believe this um, update has dealt with a lot of those issues. Additionally, there are some fixes to the battle UI. So uh, they added unit weapon and armor upgrade icons to unit cards, uh, fixed an issue where firing arc ranges would not render on water. Uh, that's nice. Um, removed context sensitivity for halt and withdraw buttons. Both options are now always available. This really bothered me. This really bothered me. So I'm glad they fixed this. Um, additionally, 
yeah, that's pretty much all I want to say about that one. And then menu UI, there are some fixes there. Uh, not too interesting. And then some miscellaneous fixes, uh, including some fixes to the camera mode, where the setting would reset to remastered camera after relaunching the game. Added zoom in and zoom out buttons to the minimap. This is major. This is something I missed. So that's nice to see. Um, okay. So that's pretty much all I want to talk about there. Uh, a lot of people had issues with the audio in terms of sound effects and things like that. So all of that has been fixed and polished in uh, the audio section of this patch. Uh, so there were a lot of issues with sound effects being too low or too loud and things like that. So all of that has been addressed in this patch. And some effects have actually been replaced with higher quality versions like the Wind Sand 2 and Wind Sand 3 sound effects. So I think that's good. And sometimes incorrect audio would trigger due to certain things. And all of that stuff has been polished in this patch. Now, uh, there are also some gameplay and uh, visual fixes here. So for example, followers that impact Squalor and Unrest stats now correctly display their modifiers as positive negative. So that is good to, to see. And that was an annoying thing for me. Uh, additionally, uh, they fixed an issue when, when selecting daily or monthly races would reset to yearly on end turn. I think that's a very nice fix. Fixing all these bugs, super important. Especially bugs that were introduced in the remaster that were not in the original Realm. Um, additionally, there's not much I want to talk about here. A bunch of issues fixed in uh, the battle in battle, uh, some menu issues fixed, some achievement issues fixed. So now again, to some more juicy details, a lot of people have been upset about the state of the AI in Rome Remastered. So in my review, I said that the AI in Rome Remastered is uh, still the Rome Total War AI from the original, but just polished a little more. So it's a little, um, less over aggressive in certain situations it's better able to evaluate when to charge when to hold back when to flank uh, it's a little bit better in terms of uh, siege defense siege offense it doesn't freeze as much but there were still a ton of issues right with the ai especially in terms of uh, pathfinding some issues with uh, diplomacy and things of that nature the campaign ai had some issues as well uh, even though it, all of these things are improved compared to the original Rome, in my opinion, um, there are still a lot of improvements made in this patch to the campaign AI and the battle AI. So that's uh, really amazing. So a lot of things have been improved in terms of uh, protectorate diplomacy. A lot of things have uh, improved uh, when dealing with uh, ceasefire proposals. And... Uh, yeah, I don't want to go over these in too much detail. Again, you can check all of these things, all of these fixes in detail in the um, fixes list in the description below. Uh, of The most important thing is one of the last things on this list, improved pathfinding when sending units to the center of a settlement. Fixed an issue where pathfinding movement indicators could be stuck along waypoints. Uh, fixed an issue when moving units along walls where the unit pathing UI could fall off clip within the walls. So uh, a lot of issues with pathfinding have been addressed here. So hopefully uh, once we all get our hands on this patch and start testing, uh, we can see how improved it is. Uh, additionally, some fixes to controls. And uh, yeah. Oh, and stability. Fixed a number of commonly reported crashes. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about uh, in regards to this uh, major patch for Rome Remastered, uh, the beta patch 2.0.2. .2. So you can go get this beta from Steam right now and try it out. And additionally, there is a major mod available right now that is compatible with this patch. It's the mod Total Conquest. I will have a link to that in the description below. And I have to say, the mod Total Conquest looks incredible. It's now been ported to the Mundus Magnus map, an updated version of the Mundus Magnus map. So when I showed Mundus Magnus on my channel uh, a couple months ago, uh, it a lot of the textures and things were still 
uh, definitely a work in progress, but now it looks a lot nicer and I will be showing off the new version of Total Conquest in, um, in another video, perhaps tomorrow or the next day. So that's everything I have to say about this Rome Remastered. Huge patch, massive patch, a lot of modding, limits increased, modding tools released, a lot of issues with the game have been addressed with the UI and the AI. So I'm really glad to see uh, that they are still working on the game. So in any case, that's everything I have to say about this patch. I hope you have a wonderful day. If you enjoyed this video, if you enjoy videos about the historical Total Wars and their mods, consider liking this video. Consider subscribing to the channel. I'll see you in the next one.